So welcome to this webinar, which is an introduction to geopathic stress. My name is Kim Knight, director of KimKnightHealth.com and the EmotionalAlchemyAcademy.com and also EMFDetective.com. And the point of this webinar is to help people get what I call a layman's understanding of geopathic stress what that means uh, and, and in order to you know be able to look after their health in, in a better way and protect themselves from EMF radiation and our agenda in this webinar is going to be well what is geopathic stress the difference between man-made and natu natural geopathic stress how man-made wireless radi radiation and also natural radiation affects human health. Uh, some examples of what happens to people um, with um, EMF radiation and just a few tips on what you can do to mitigate the effects. And I want to start with sharing why I'm sharing this because this is not something I've really spoken about too loudly up until this point. Um, and even though I've been following this topic for many years for my own personal experience, there are bigger reasons as to why I'm starting to be more vocal on this topic right now. So to introduce myself, um, because obviously if you've never met me, you've never seen anything that I do, it's really important to get a little bit of background about me because otherwise I'm just a complete stranger. And one of the things that's really important when we learn anything from anyone is that we need to know, like, and trust them. So I just want to give you a very brief background is that in my main work, I'm known as the Kiwi health detective and I help people get to the root cause of their health problems and, and not just get to the root cause of them, but obviously resolve them because once we've identified the cause, we obviously want to resolve the issue. And that is what I've been doing for the past 30 years for myself initially, and for the past 13 years, helping clients in clinical practice. And I have a membership site and obviously clients all over the world. And I created the Emotional Alchemy Academy, which focuses, as you can tell from the name, on how emotions affect our health because by goodness, they really do. So I've had what I would say is 30 years exploration into what creates illness and what creates health. And I've self healed myself from a multitude of chronic illnesses, including chronic fatigue, anxiety, depression, back pain, allergies, asthma, and a lot more. And have, as far as this topic is concerned, EMF, I have had some very clear personal first-hand experiences of the detrimental effects of geopathic stress, both man-made and natural, and have done a lot of work to be able to negate those harmful effects. And I'm gonna share what those experiences were later in the webinar. But that was what really got me interested in this topic was having having a, a negative, let's call it, experience of EMF, but at the time not knowing initially that that was what was causing the problem. I knew, I knew how I was feeling. I, was, I knew what the effects were, which is the end result, but I didn't know what the cause was. And of course, I'm very fascinated, as you can already see from what I've explained, is that I'm very fascinated about, about getting to the root cause of anything or, or of a problem and resolving it from the root cause. And so this is really another facet of, of health. Uh, and rather than it being internal in terms of stress and emotions and that sort of thing, it's an external factor which plays a considerable role in our health. So also, uh, you know, I've, I've won several, well, few awards and been nominated for several awards. So uh, I've been around the block, so to speak. And 
I need to say straight up that I'm not a geopathic stress expert. Um, what I mean by geopathic stress expert is somebody who is a trained engineer who's trained in, you know, in how to use scientific measuring devices to, to go out and measure EMF in, in people's houses or, or out in the environment uh, and, and has that sort of engineering, physics, chemistry background. That is not at all where I'm coming from. And, uh, and I don't find it, have a problem with that because I think it's so important to be able to have a lay person's perspective because otherwise it's really difficult to understand this topic. So for example, the other day, recently, just um, out of pure interest, I had an EMF expert come to my house to measure EMF levels because I wanted to see, okay, well, you know, what EMF is going on inside my house because I hadn't measured it for some time. And he was so passionate about the topic and gave me so much amazing information, but a lot of it just went over the top of my head because he's a very scientific, uh, you know, physics, facts, statistics, uh, you know, talking about volts and, you know, all this sort of, uh, you know, engineering speak, which just doesn't really resonate with me. So I feel that, you know, being an individual who's had these firsthand experiences of the negative effects of both man-made and natural geopathic stress, and having explored this topic myself for over 20 years, including in the past, having gone and studied what is called building biology ecology, which is how to build houses which, uh, which create beneficial effects for a human being rather than harming a human being. You know, what, what material do you make, you know, the bricks of and, and how, do you place the, uh, how do you place that house on the land? Uh, you know, I did, uh, you know, a reasonable amount of building biology ecology study in the 90s. Uh, and also the very first training that I did as a professional health practitioner was to become a feng shui practitioner. I, I've done a professional training in, in feng shui or feng shui, however you like to pronounce it, which is all about how the energy of space affects us. And when I talk about space, I'm, I don't just mean space out in outer space. I mean our environment. Uh, you know, how does our environment affect us? <clears throat> and in particular, you know, buildings and the land that surrounds us. So I have looked into this topic a fair amount, and it's because it's a natural interest of mine. However, I always, I think it's really important to say that you need to research this topic yourself, not just hear what I say or what anybody else says, is go research it yourself. And this is something I've been doing more recently. And it's actually incredible the amount of information that is out there, uh, which once you start to learn it, it really starts to change your perspective on things and to really see the need for some significant changes to happen in our world today if we are to continue to be healthy. let's look at illness and health and the truth is that illness is not merely the absence of disease it's the ability to live in joy peace and harmony with oneself in other words what oneself is you know peaceful and harmonious and healthy with fellow people with nature and the whole planet and everything is interconnected and when we look at health, we can either look at how the inside of us, so to speak, affects our body. So we could say we could call that from the inside out, or we can look at it, well, what outside influences are affecting the inside of us. And both approaches are important. So the way that I look at things, when I talk about inside to out, I'm talking about how we live our life. Uh, in terms of, you know, how we live physically, how we live mentally in our mind, how we live in our emotions and our feelings. So, you know, things like diet and movement, exercise, our thoughts, our thought patterns, our emotions, in particular, obviously negative emotions, uh, you know, past trauma, 
and abuse, maybe even current trauma and abuse, unconscious beliefs and patterning, unhealthy lifestyle behaviors and habits, stress. These are all factors which go towards creating dis-ease, which then turns into disease. And that is my main area of speciality as a health coach. However, we need to look from the outside in as well. And there are many so-called environmental toxins in our world, unfortunately. You know, for example, sprays, herbicides, pesticides, plastic bottles that we drink from, you know, the, the underarm spray that you spray on your body, uh, you know, cleaning products. There are so many toxic substances that we're constantly using, uh, you know, in our own homes, or even, you know, just getting spread through the atmosphere. You know, cigarettes are another toxin. Uh, alcohol, I mean, it's more internal, but alcohol is a toxin. Caffeine is a toxin. Uh, junk food is a toxin. Um, and so we have a whole host of mainly man-made toxins that more and more and more over the past hundred years only really have really been getting to these you know, incredibly ridiculous high levels. Um, but we've just been slowly, slowly, you know, um, adding in all these toxins and they've been, a lot of these toxins are actually added in and we don't even know about them because we're not the manufacturers, uh, but just so many toxins. And you've only got to go and look at the seas and the rivers today to see the difference between what that you know say for example the caribbean sea looked like in 1986 which was when i was working there to what it is now uh was it 96 2006 so 30 35 years later there is a massive difference in the quality of the water in our rivers and our sea and so much of that is to do well all of it really is to do with all the toxins that we're creating and then then, then are getting fed into the the sea and, and the rivers and in this webinar, we are going to be mainly focusing on geopathic stress and what that particular environmental toxin is. But I always like to look at things in the bigger picture and the bigger scheme of things and to understand that there are so many different contributing factors to what creates illness. And it's really, really important to know, you know what these factors are and to be able to isolate all the different factors for ourselves because different things will play a different part. So we live in a beautiful world, an absolutely stunning world. And you've only got to go out in nature, you know, away from buildings and recognize and remember, wow, we live in an incredibly beautiful world and we want to keep it that way. So let's make a start on looking at uh, EMF, uh, which means electromagnetic fields, and the difference between what is natural EMF and man-made EMF, and EMF you know, is the same as geopathic stress, so to speak, um, uh, and how this EMF has an effect on our body and on nature. And one of the things that we need to remember is what we could call the hidden nature of things. And just because you can't see something doesn't mean it's not there or it's not having its effect. And this is so, so critical to remember when we're looking at geopathic stress. And it's why a lot of people get ill and they don't know why they're ill. And it's also why uh, a lot of people deny that these things are having an effect, it's because they can't see it. But there's a lot of things that we don't see uh, that are actually there. Now, for a start, I was going for a walk just this morning and it was a beautiful, cold, winter, misty morning here in New Zealand. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I always tend to notice that when it's really beautiful, cold, misty morning, one tends to see spiders webs, which are there, you know, maybe when, when it's not misty and cold, but you don't notice them. And it always looks really beautiful, even though I'm not a fan of spiders. Um, you know, the webs are absolutely stunning. 
And we have to remember that these webs may be there at other times, but they only really get seen when we have these cold, frosty mornings. And also often we can see rainbows and think, oh, a rainbow just appeared. But actually the rainbows are there. We only just happen to see them when the sun or the rain happens to you know, shine in a certain way. So there's a lot going on that's there that, that is going on all the time that we don't know is there. And interestingly enough in my work, I mean, this is a, this is a sidetrack, but one of the big things that, that people don't realize is that you know, all the emotions and stress that's going on inside of them, they don't realize it's there a lot of the time because it's just become so habitual, but it's actually one of the main reasons as to why they have their symptoms. So we have this thing uh, in and around our body, which we can call a, an electromagnetic field. And that is because a human being is an electromagnetic being. And we tend to forget this as well. We look in the mirror and we see our physical shape and form. We see our skin and our eyes and our nose and our ears and our legs and our arms and our torso. And we think, well, that's my body. But actually there's a lot more to our body. And, and if you're a doctor or a scientist of some sort and you've done lots of research on this, then you're probably going to be much more aware of this. But the general person who hasn't studied this topic is probably not going to be thinking about it so much. They're more focused on what clothes should I put on to look nice? And they're more sort of focused on the external, which by the way is, you know, another big issue in our world today, you know, in general is this, you know, looking at external things rather than internal. So we have this body which inside has all our organs and our tissues and our bones and our brain and all the major organs like the heart and the lungs and the liver and the stomach etc and you know if we drill down then we start getting to a cellular level where everything is just cells and groups of cells and if we go beyond that we get to a quantum level you know the atomic level the molecular level and when we get down to that level we really start to see how everything is uh well a lot there's a lot of electromagnetic uh stuff for want of a better word going on so let's start with a little bit of tidbit of science just really basic uh you know just this is just like less than a speck but you know we need to look at a little bit of science and as far as electricity is concerned, there are two types of current. One is DC, which was developed by Edison, um, and uh, that the electric charge flows only in one direction, and um, battery appliances use DC current. And it's also the type of electricity that happens to be in living beings. And neurons communicate and send signals with this type of electric flux. And then there is the AC current, which was discovered by Nikola Tesla, where the charge shifts direct direction periodically. Um, and this is what is used in a lot of household appliances. So animal electricity was discovered in 1780 by a man called Luigi Galvani. When he was, he noticed that when he applied a, an electrode to a, a dead frog, that, that it moved. And neurons transfer electric information around our body and through axons, which are nerves, um, through a process called action potential. And electricity from neurons eventually releases hormones such as dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin. And our body is literally embedded with electrochemical language. So the point of sharing this tiny, tiny microscopic tidbit of science is just to really drive it home that we are an electromagnetic being. And therefore, we are going to be affected by other electromagnetic objects or things. And our heart has a very powerful electromagnetic field, which is actually 5,000 times stronger than the EM field of the brain. It is very powerful. And the heart is actually the greatest electric generator in the body. 
through the continuous pumping and motion uh, of the heart, this creates a magnetic field around itself, which goes way beyond the skin, several meters beyond the skin. And it creates electrical sound, pressure, heat, light, magnetic and electromagnetic signals. And because the blood is a very good conductor of electricity, the whole of the circulatory system pulses with electricity each time the heart beats. And the brain and the heart are electromagnetic organisms. We are an electromagnetic being. We are energy. And we interface with other people energetically and with our environment energetically and other people will affect us and our environment will affect us and whatever is in our environment will affect us. And there is no getting away from that because of how we are made. And the heart's electromagnetic field will, uh, you know, through the feelings that we're feeling will affect people around us and our environment. So, for example, people often say, you know, I walked into a room and I could cut the atmosphere with a knife. And that is because, say, for example, somebody had a big argument, that energy literally goes beyond the body into the environment and affects that space. So we're not separate from our environment and we affect our environment, which, you know, on the other hand, and if we have, you know, good vibes and lots of loving, you know, peaceful, respectful, positive emotional energy that's going into our environment, then that's going to feel good as well. So it works both ways. But, you know, experiments have been done on the effects of how the human uh, mind and heart affect the energy of the planet. Uh, and this has been done through a lot through uh, an organization called HeartMath. And I interviewed um, one, one of the um, um, main people from HeartMath a few years ago on a summit that I ran. And we talked about this. And, you know, so we really have to understand that humans affect the planet and the planet affects humans and everything in the environment is affecting us all the time. Now, another thing to remember is that uh, a human being is called a, a macrocosm of the, or I always get this the wrong way around, the microcosm of the macrocosm. <laughs> so, you know, we're, we are a miniature of the world, if that makes sense. So the world is, you know, also electromagnetic and it has its own electromagnetic field. And we are like a microcosm of that macrocosm you know, as above, so below. And we all have, you know, every human person has an energy field called the human energy field. Some people call it the aura. And Barbara Ann Brennan has written several great books on this, did a huge amount of study on it. And anybody who learns energy healing, which is one of the therapies that I learned very early on, will come to study you know, the human energy field and how we have various layers in the human energy field uh, and, uh, and how these layers can be um, uh, affected in a negative way, let's say, by trauma that happens to us, by the environment that we live in, by not taking care of ourselves. I mean, many, many ways that the human energy field can be um, harmed. Uh, but the point is, we have a human energy field, which is unseen. It's, again, it's unseen to most people, although some people can see, you know, the aura and the human energy field. But this energy field is going to be affected by uh, what is in our environment and how we live our life and everything that's ever happened to us. And interestingly enough, you know, in the studies that I, you know, did, which was some years ago now, it was 20 years, over 20 years since I was studying this type of uh, therapy is that a lot of illness actually starts in the human energy field before it actually be becomes symptomatic in the physical body at a physical level. And really, the, you know, we can say that also equates to the fact that illness starts in, in, at a mind through our, you know, our unhealthy thoughts and thought patterns and our negative emotions, which are in the energy field before it shows up in the physical body. 
Now the Earth also, as I said, has its own energy field and it has what's called a Schumann resonance, which is measured or was measured at 7.83 Hertz. And it's, it's what's called the natural Schumann resonance or the natural um, electromagnetic field of the Earth. And it was uh, discovered by this man called Schumann. And the Schumann resonances are a set of spectrum peaks in, in an extremely low frequency portion of the Earth's electromagnetic field. And <clears throat> the Schumann and resonances are uh, generated by lightning discharges in the cavity formed by the Earth's surface, Earth surface and the ionosphere. So obviously this is, again, I'm not an expert in this, this, this uh, area, but the point here is to show that the Earth also has its fields of energy around it. It is electromagnetic. Uh, and, and so it's not just humans that are, you know, experiencing this, it's, it's the whole planet. So we don't just live on the earth, we live inside it, namely in the unique cavity that is formed between the earth's surface and the ionosphere above the earth. And within that cavity, we swim in a sea of invisible energies and oscillating fields. And the smallest change in one intertwined area carries over turbulence into others. This is why there's that saying that if a butterfly flaps its wing on one side of the world, then it can create a hurricane on the other side of the world. Uh, sort of metaphorically speaking, but also, you know, there's truth in this is that whatever happens, uh, you know, in, in one area, you know, on the planet literally affects every other part of the planet. So every second, a multitude of pulses travel around the world in this unique resonant chamber between the Earth and the ionosphere, sending colluding signals to all microorganisms. And these signals couple us to the Earth's magnetic field, and they're named after their discoverer, Schumann. And if you want to read more about any of these, you can see all the references links on the bottom of the slides. And I do recommend that you go and check out some of these articles because I'm only putting a snippet of, of what was in these articles in, in this PowerPoint. So what is geopathic stress? It is the study of earth energies and their effect on human well-being. So as you've already learned by now, humans are electromagnetic organisms, so are animals, so are plants, and so is the whole planet. And energy interacts and affects other energy. And, and you can, this cannot be avoided. This is just a, you know, a universal physics law, if you like, uh, that everything is going to affect everything else. Now, if we talk about the topic of geopathic stress, it's split up into two types um, predominantly. So you've got what we call natural versus unnatural, which is man-made. So natural geopathic stress is what occurs in nature by itself. And man-made geopathic stress is all the man-made stuff that we create that creates geopathic EMF. So we have these two types of geopathic stress. So some examples of natural geopathic stress are ley lines, which are so underground energy lines. A bit, you know, you can imagine that we have veins in our body. Well, the earth has veins as well, and energy flows through those veins uh, and arteries, and these are called ley lines. And there are also underground rivers and waterways underneath the, the soil. And there are what are called curry grids, which are another uh, type of energy line underneath uh, the, the soil in, in, within the planet. And lightning, for example, is geopathic stress. And all these uh, electromagnetic um, stresses have their effect on human beings. So, for example, if you sleep with your bed over a ley line or a curry grid or an underground river or waterway, it can have a detrimental effect on your body. 
and you can get quite sick. And this is just natural geopathic stress. So this is why it's so important to get your house checked out by an expert who can, and that will need to be a dowser because the only way really to, to, uh, to find these, uh, these um, natural lines uh, is to douse for them. And I'm gonna share in my story later of my personal experiences of you know, what happened to me when I started finding some of these things where I was living. And then unnatural geopathic stress or EMF is all the man-made stuff. And boy, you know, this is really the bulk of it, you know, <laughs> in terms of, you know, and it's just getting more and more and more. So, you know, this is not a definitive list here. You know, electricity pylons, you know, electricity stations, anything Wi-Fi, you know, wireless, uh, um, X-rays, MRI machines, uh, cordless phones, any Bluetooth device, you know, sitting in your electric car, uh, internet, 2G, 3G, 4G, um, proposed 5G, cell phones, iPads, computers, uh, you know, there's just so much uh, EMF uh, being produced by man-made products. And the thing with these man-made products is that we could say that they are silent, invisible noise. And the reason I call it this, or it could, well, I'm sure I'm not the only person that calls it this, is that even though we're not hearing it, it's actually making a noise and it's pulsing and that is what is causing the problem with, you know, the interaction with our own electromagnetic field. And so a lot of people, they don't know this and because they're not aware of it, they think, well, it's not having an effect, but you know, that's not true. That's absolutely not true. It's absolutely having its effect. Now, if we look at the electromagnetic spectrum, um, you know, we have radio waves, microwaves, infrared waves, ultraviolet rays, soft X-rays, hard X-rays, gamma rays, all sorts of types of rays. But if you look at the actual amount of this electromagnetic spectrum, which is visible, it's very small look how much of the electromagnetic spectrum is actually visible and how much of it is invisible. But, you know, we have power lines and radio waves uh, and microwaves and wireless um, radiation and satellites and medical radiation. All of this, uh, you know, it's there. Uh, we don't see it, we don't hear it, but it's there and it's making a noise. And that's how, for example, how you do hear the radio, you know, it's, it's carried through the airwaves. Um, and we tend to forget this unless we're, you know, maybe a scientist or an engineer who really understands this at a much deeper level. So, for example, cell phone towers make a noise. They make this invisible, silent, but not so silent noise, which can be measured on a meter. And when the EMF expert came to my house um, last week, he had a whole you know, suitcase of measuring devices. And he showed me exactly what the noise was, was coming from my cordless phones, from my Wi-Fi router, from my cell phone, uh, from all these different devices. And when you actually hear the noise, it, it makes it real. You know, um, even though one can feel it, you know, and sense, you know, through symptoms, the effects of Wi-Fi, when you actually hear the noise of what these um, gadgets are making, it really brings it home. And one of the reasons that they make these noises is because they're continually trying to communicate with something else. So, for example, the cell tower is continually trying to, to uh, well, not con trying to, it's continually communicating with your cell phone uh, and creating a pulse. And it's these pulses which distorts the human electromagnetic field. Um, and interestingly enough, I had been thinking, hey, well, I, I get really bad cell phone reception where I live, so therefore I will be less affected by 
you know, the cell phone radiation, but actually it's not true because my cell phone reception is so bad. My phone has to work twice as hard to try and get a reception and therefore it pulses even more. So we have these cell towers and these electricity pylons and they are pulsing out silent, invisible noise 24 seven. And it's only because we've got so used to it that we don't notice it. You know, if we were to plop somebody from a hundred years ago into our world today, they'd probably keel over from the shock of all the EM radiation that is around. So these, you know, these cellular structures are communicating all the time with, for example, your smart meter, your cell phone, your Wi-Fi router, and it is the communication and the pulsing uh, noises that that are going on continuously between the different uh, gadgets that are actually creating this distortion and in our own electromagnetic field and also in the you know the general atmosphere around us and we have so many wi-fi gadgets these days and, and again i haven't even put all of the things on here you know i could put a bluetooth printer um, uh, on here, you know, so we've got our Wi-Fi routers, um, we've got our smart meters, uh, our cordless phones, our cell phones, our baby, um, what do they call these baby monitors, uh, which obviously is even worse for little babies who are, you know, have much less resilience than than an adult. And then we have, you know, our fridges, which are getting even so-called smarter and our televisions and our computers, which are constantly beaming radiation at us unless we have protective, you know, screen on them. This silent noise is pulsing all the time. And if you get it measured, you will clearly understand through seeing both the numbers on the machines, uh, but also hearing the noise that is made you will really it really brings it home wow this is really what is happening um, and there are the interesting thing about the safety standards and this is a big issue is that they were set many years ago um, I can't remember if it was 2011 um, but they were set many years ago uh, by the World Health Organization but the safety standards that the Building Biology and Ecology Institute have set are far, 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 far lower than what the World Health Organization has set. Um, so A, you know, there's this huge difference in what, what the Building Biology and Ecology Institute deem as actually safe compared to the World Health, Health Organization. But also uh, these, um, these um, what's the word, regulations are just so out of date because so much has changed since 2011 in terms of you know how all this emf and wi-fi has progressed and it is much much stronger now so also the plan is by you know the powers that be is is what is now a bit of a buzzword and starting to become a buzzword which is called the internet of things which is how everything will connect and communicate with everything else. In other words, your coffee maker will communicate with your cell phone. So you can you know, program your coffee and you can program your dishwasher and your washing machine. And it's already happening in people who have got lots of money. They can program their lights and their alarm system, you know, from, from afar. And uh, you, can oh, just so many things uh, you know <laughs> there's this sort of interconnectivity you know driverless cars which we already have but you know even more of that um, just everything being in, interconnected to everything else through Wi-Fi through Bluetooth which all requires more and more and more EMF you know radiation um, you know, just as a consequence because of how it's all connecting. So the Internet of Things is the extension of the Internet connectivity into physical devices and everyday objects um, where, you know, all electronics and Internet uh, things are they're all embedded with, you know, Bluetooth and EM, you know, ability, uh, sorry, well, connectivity ability. Um, so there are lots of sensors 
and these devices can communicate and interact with each other over the internet and through Wi-Fi, uh, so they can be remotely monitored and controlled. And this is what the Internet of Things is about. Now, there are other ramifications about this, which I'm going to go into in another webinar, because I don't have time to put everything in this webinar, and I want to focus mainly on this webinar in geopathic stress, man-made and natural, just keep it simple, introductory. But there's a whole load of other ramifications uh, of this Internet of Things. But, so let's look now at the effects of this geopathic stress, this EMF, on the human body. And I can assure you I'm only putting a really small um, smattering of examples here. There are thousands of examples, m hundreds of thousands of examples of you know, what, what could be shown in a presentation like this. I'm just giving you a very few that I've heard of recently. Um, there's, there's no bias, if you like, to what I've chosen here. It's just whatever has come across my, my path in the last few weeks. So, and what I want to point out is it's a nice little saying from a guy called Joss Del Sol, who is very into, you know, um, um, educating people into the harmful effects of uh, Wi-Fi. And I'll be sharing more about him in a minute, is that he says, we scare because we care. So not trying to be negative here. I'm not trying to create fear. I'm just trying to give people a reality check. Because one of the problems is, is that what we don't know does harm us. And people are unaware that they're unaware. And the more we inform and educate ourselves, the better choices we can make to, to improve things. So this is a very old statistic. I didn't have time to, to search a, you know, a current one, but the growth and exposure to urban EMF increased 3,000 times between 2000 and 2010. <clears throat> and I'd like you just to think for a moment, you know, as we're recording this, it's 2019. Uh, I'd like you to think for a moment, where were you 10 years ago and what sort of internet type gadgets or you know wi-fi gadgets did you have in your home or your office and just just have a think about that for a moment for myself if i think back to you know 2010 2009 uh, you know, yeah, I had a computer and I had a cell phone, which was not a smartphone, I'm sure, back then. And uh, I did not have, or maybe I was just starting, I can't remember, to have Wi-Fi. Um, but things were, you know, a lot simpler. And if I think back to 20 years ago, 2000, uh, I had a computer, never heard of Wi-Fi. Um, can't remember if I had a cell phone back then. I can't really remember. Yeah. But, you know, you, if, if we go back and we look backwards in time, we can really see how much has changed and actually how we take for granted what we now have, which we, you know, we didn't even know we didn't have 10, 20, 30 years ago. Now, I, I remember back in 1993 was the first time that I was really introduced into computers. Um, and into the into emails that was when you know emails started and I was actually working for a major computer company at that time and they introduced emails uh, up until then we were using faxes and they said we're going to we're going to introduce emails and I said no way I don't want to I don't want to use email I just want to continue using a fax <laughs> Um, but you know that soon changed so you know we initially we can resist these changes and then we just sort of you know it, it's like this force that forces us to get on board otherwise you know we're not on the train uh, so things have really radically changed over the last 10 20 30 40 50 years and you know the the reality is is that EMF has harmful effects to human pathology including, and, and this is just a smattering, as I said, this is not everything at all. This is just a few examples. 
but including damage to the eyes, because of course, especially if you're looking at the computer all the time, uh, or your cell phone or whatever, uh, endocrine system, immune system, nervous system, the skin, the cells, uh, you know, mo molecules, atoms, you know, everything really. Um, and some of the examples of proven, you know, scientifically proven um, effects are impaired cognitive function, blood cell mut mutation, DNA mutation, damage to unborn fetuses, lowered sperm count, disruption of cell metabolism, increasing stress proteins, free radical damage, damage to the microbiome, which is all your, you know, healthy gut bacteria. Um, <clears throat> and this is just like a few smattering of, you know, what can go on. And there are literally thousands of peer reviewed research articles, uh, which you can just go and Google and find thousands. And even right now, there is a petition which has been submitted by nearly 250 scientists and doctors appealing to the United Nations uh, about 5G. And I'm going to be talking about that in another webinar. Um, so, you know, a lot of people in the know who, who really understand this, you know, far better than I do from a physics perspective are saying, you know, this has to stop. So here are some more examples. <clears throat> and originally, the International Agency for Re Research on Cancer classified uh, microwave radiation as a possible carcinogen, but new research is suggesting it should be reclassified as a probable uh, carcinogen or a proven carcinogen. And, you know, a lot of people who really have done a lot of research into this um, topic, which obviously I haven't, um, but <clears throat> they, they are very clear that it's a probable or a proven carcinogen. So that means it creates cancer. Okay. Now, studies have shown that people who live closer to cellular phone towers and infrastructure uh, you know, have an increased risk in cancer. Lots of studies on that. Depression and other neuropsychiatric effects can have been shown to occur as a result of EMF radiation. And cell sites have been shown to contribute to type 2 diabetes. And it's been shown to affect sperm count. And in this uh, documentary, um, and I've got a little snippet of it on my website, there's a link there. Uh, just, it's, it's like a five minute um, video clip that you can watch on the effect of smart meters on blood, uh, blood cells. And uh, Dr. Frank Springob says, in every single case of testing people staying in front of a smart meter, the human energy field was obliterated as they stood in front of it in under a minute. So here are the cells, nice and round, before exposure to the smart meter. And within a minute or two of standing in front of the smart meter, the cell membranes, which are the walls of the cell, were degraded, mutated, and broken as a result of the trauma to the blood cells. So let me share some experiences, which is why I'm so passionate about talking about this topic, because I'm not talking about it from a theoretical perspective. I'm talking about it from a personal experience perspective, as I do with everything that I talk about. So <clears throat> the very first experience I had, uh, or detrimental experience um, with Wi-Fi, wireless radiation, was back when Wi-Fi routers were just starting to, to um, come, you know, to, to, to be used. And I bought this router and uh, I, you know, I'd heard, oh, you know, Wi-Fi, you know, it's really good. It means you can, you know, you don't have to have wires and you can use your computer and your TV and whatever it is around the house without wires. And I thought, wow, that sounds great. And I went and bought <clears throat> this, this router and I put it on and I was working at home at the time. And over a period of about six months, I started to notice that my thinking wasn't as clear and that I wasn't able to do my work. 
but I couldn't work out why it was. All I knew was that when I went into my office in the morning and sat down to work, um, <clears throat> I, and actually there are two things here <laughs> and they're both separate. I, I have to describe them separately. Um, and I can't actually even remember which comes first, but it doesn't really matter for the, for, you know, for the sharing of this. I, I, I was noticing that I would go into my office and I just couldn't concentrate and I didn't feel like working and it was like my brain was a bit mushy, which is not usual for me. And it was getting really frustrating because it was affecting my ability to actually do work. And then, and, and I even <laughs> tried moving my office to different rooms. It was a bit like Goldilocks. And I moved my office into another room to see, well, you know, having a bit of a change up and moving things around, you know, will that, will that help? But it didn't help. And then one day I got this email from a colleague and the head, in the headline it said something about Wi-Fi routers create symptoms or something. I don't I can't remember exactly. And and I sat there because my mind wasn't working really well. And this is the problem is that when you get um, cognitive dissonance happening from EM radiation or could be other things as well that can create cognitive dissonance. But when you get it, your brain isn't working enough to be able to ask the right questions and to troubleshoot. So that email sat in my inbox for a couple of weeks and then one day, without even reading, I hadn't read the email at this point. I, I kept on thinking, oh, I'll get round to that when, when, you know, when I have time. And after a couple of weeks, just for the heck of it, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to turn the Wi-Fi router off uh, and I'm going to experiment and see, could this be contributing to my brain fog? And I thought that if I turned the Wi-Fi router off, maybe it would take a week or two for me to notice a difference. That was my expectation as I turned it off. I turned it off and within about three seconds, I felt a complete difference and I was blown away. I could not believe it. So I switched it back on again and it, the, the brain fog was there again. I switched it off and it was gone. And it was just absolutely irrefutable, the difference. And I was like, wow. And then I went to read the email that my friend had sent me. And this is one of the things I noticed with myself for my research, so to speak, using myself as a guinea pig, is that I tend to have the experience first and then I get the scientific data afterwards, which backs it up, which means I can't be making it up in my mind. And I turned it, I, I started reading this email and and, and was reading, oh my goodness, you know, read all these facts about how, you know, wireless radiation and, and Wi-Fi routers can really affect you, a whole load of scientific data. And I even wrote a blog about it, which is, you know, on my website, because I was just so blown away by the difference. And from that moment on, I, I vowed I would not have Wi-Fi on again in my house. Uh, and I didn't for many years. Uh, I do a little bit now, but I'm actually able to tolerate it a lot better than I was able to back then. So uh, that was the first thing. Then I had another thing where uh, in the same house where, again, I had some, you know, I just wasn't feeling 100%, <clears throat> couldn't work out what's going on. And so I called in a dowser. And this is, you know, to, to douse for mainly the natural geopathic stress rather than the man-made because I didn't really have a lot of man-made geopathic stress in the house at the time. This was, you know, um, for what, I don't know, 10 years ago. And he came along and he discovered that there was indeed a, 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 what is called a curry grid running right through my office and also through my bedroom. And, and it was affecting me. So you see, I'd been feeling something, but I didn't know what was causing it. So he comes along, he tests, he finds that there's a curry grid lying, uh, running underneath my you know, two rooms where I spend a lot of time. And he put up a magnetic coil to neutralize it. Don't ask me how it works. It's again, it's physics, uh, but he put up this coil and, uh, and I felt completely different uh, very, very quickly. 
So, you know, I had a firsthand experience of what it feels like to be in the, in the unhealthy geopathic stress zone, so to speak, and then to have that neutralized and then to feel the difference. Now, I had another experience when I went to visit a friend in London a few years ago, and I hadn't seen this friend for 17 years, and I hadn't been to his house for 17 years. And I walked in the door and sat down and I was due to be staying there for a few days or even a few weeks, I think. And within an hour, my head was feeling really heavy and I couldn't think. And I was just feeling really sluggish and gluggish in my head. And of course, as I said, when we're in that state, it's very hard to think clearly because we've already lost our clear thinking. So I was sitting there going, what is going on here? This, this feeling feels really familiar. I know I felt this before and I can't put my finger on it. And then the light bulb went on and it was like, oh, geopathic stress. There's some form of geopathic stress here. I have no idea what it is, but this is the type of symptom that I feel when I'm you know, experiencing that. And even though he doesn't believe in this sort of thing, I convinced him, persuaded him <laughs> to get the house doused. And this feng shui expert came round and she found an underground waterway running right through the middle of the house. And it's a very tiny house. You know, houses in London can be very small. <laughs> but right through the middle of this house was an underground river. She did, I don't know, I can't remember what she did to neutralize, but it did feel better. However, it was so bad that first night that I, I could not even sleep there. I actually had to go to a hotel that night to sleep because it was so bad I couldn't I could not stay in that house and in fact I didn't actually end up staying there I had to go and stay somewhere else so you know these effects can be very extreme and uh, you know this is why so many people you know may be ill and may not be knowing what's going on when actually there's something really real going on but it's this invisible silent you know noise or uh, or, or disturbance in, in, the, in the environment that is actually really creating a problem because it's affecting our own electromagnetic field. So a couple of other short examples. I remember some years ago, I went to Queenstown for uh, a week and I booked myself into a youth hostel um, and, uh, and it was right in the center of town and, the, and it was very squished in between a lot of other buildings. And when I went to check on my cell phone, how many you know, Wi-Fi spots are there around, there was something like 19 Wi-Fi spots that you know, I could have tapped into. And I thought to myself, okay, well, this is gonna be interesting. Let's see how we go. But within 24 hours, I had a splitting headache <clears throat> and I don't get headaches really. I had a splitting headache and I knew it was from all the Wi-Fi around and I had to check out and go to another hotel and spend a lot more money, but I just could not stay in that place. And the last one that I want to share is just very recently, I had some new neighbors move in and they brought with them um, a Bitcoin mining machine and actually more than one and they had them on in the shed next door. And it made a continuous, horrible, humming, whirring sound because of all the, um, the fans that had to keep going because it uses a lot of electricity. And it was just a constant ongoing hum. And it just so happened that when the EMF expert came out to measure, um, it, it was just coincidental that he came out just after these neighbors had moved in and he measured it and he indeed measured that no, the EMF radiation coming off those machines through the walls is higher than what the build and biology ecologists deem as, you know, uh, acceptable. And it was very, very disturbing for me. Um, I had to close my windows um, and I could hear it at night. It was just this ongoing hum, very, very disturbing to my energy field. And fortunately, the landlords deemed that, um, you know, this is unacceptable and told them that they had to get them out of the shed. So for, otherwise, I would have had to move out. And this is a really interesting point 
because what has happened without us even realizing with all this increase in the use of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth products and cell phone towers and, you know, yeah, yeah all the, the cell phone towers and, and all our products is that it's getting let we're getting less and less able to go anywhere where we can be away from this EMF radiation. And this is a real problem. Uh, you know, yes, you can control it to a certain amount in your house, but you can choose not to have cordless phones or your cell phone on or, or Wi-Fi or whatever gadgets it is. You can choose in your own home, but you can't choose what is coming to you from your neighbor. And if you're at work, you can't choose, you know, what, what your, unless you have an enlightened, you know, uh, employer, you, you can't choose what is coming to you from within the office or other offices around you. But, but more and more and more, it is, we are getting less able to be able to get away from it. Uh, you know, if you go to the shopping mall or wherever it is, the airport, it's everywhere. And as I'm going to talk about with in the next webinar, which is going to be focused on the 5G, uh, that is going to get a hundred times, thousand times worse. And this is the problem. You know, it's one thing when you have a choice. Uh, it's a totally other thing when you don't have a choice because whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, whether you know it or not, these electromagnetic fields are having an effect on your human energy field and there are going to be consequences because we live in a world of cause and effect. And this is why it's so important to become aware and educate yourself on the reality of the effects of EMF, because it's having an effect whether you like it or not. And I remember sitting in a taxi. I don't know where I was. I was maybe I think it might have been Australia. And I got in the back of this taxi up from the airport and and this guy, the taxi driver, was wearing one of those things on his ears, you know, the, the phone which just sits on your ear. And his ear and the area around his he ear was bright red. It looked like it must have been throbbing because of this device that he had on his ear. And I said to him, do you not feel that? And he said, what? He was so disconnected from himself so out of touch and maybe even habituated to what that felt like on his ear that he didn't even notice it anymore. But he would be probably a prime candidate for getting cancer. So to finish with just some really simple solutions. Education, education, education is the number one thing. You need to learn read, you know, read up, watch videos, just go to YouTube, look, buy books, read articles. There is so much information out there and you don't have to read much to educate yourself to find out about it. So that is the number one. You need to learn it for yourself. Then also get an expert in to check your home and your land. So this is just right now, I'm just talking for a natural ge geopathic stress here. You know, get a dowser, get a feng shui expert in, get an EMF expert in, have them test things for you with their gadgets and their machines and their dowsing rods. And then you will know for certain exactly what is what. And on my website, I have a few resources which you can follow there to find, find gadgets or people to help you. And as far as the, <clears throat> the man-made stress is concerned, again, educate yourself so important you must take responsibility and do the research yourself and then assess every electrical magnetic device and wiring in your home go through it with a tooth comb and make a list uh, if necessary get an emf expert to come and measure the emf fields um, even get your own measuring equipment. You can do some of this yourself, but you need to assess everything. Everything, every electromagnetic gadget in your home needs to be assessed and then you need to make decisions on how you use that equipment and whether you even use it at all. And you know, the things that you need to be looking for from, from inside your home, from a you know, man-made 
geopathic stress perspective is, you know, your Wi-Fi, your cell phone, anything Bluetooth, smart meters, power lines. Obviously, you can't do anything with power lines, but um, uh, electrical wiring, you know, do you need to move your bed around? Cordless phones, do you stop using them? Baby monitors, all these gadgets and devices just decide, you know, do you really need them? Do you want them on? Um, and, and how can you negate the the effects. So also just to end, uh, there's a great free book, Seven Essential Ways to Make Your Home Safe from 5G and EMF Radiation. I'm going to show you where to get that in a minute. And Five Simple Ways to Protect Yourself from Cell Phone Radiation. These are um, free gifts from the upcoming 5G Awareness and Crisis Summit, which is really focusing on 5G, which is, you know, next generation. Wi-Fi, which is just literally going to destroy humanity if it goes ahead. I, I think. I think it's the, um, the one of the biggest threats on in, on the planet today to our health. Um, and you can go to my website emfdetective.mikeajabi.com, and if you sign up for the uh, this summit, which has got some incredible speakers, I've already been listening to some of the preview speakers and it's just mind blowing. If you go to emfdetective.mikeajabi.com, uh, then you will get those downloads for free. And just to add, uh, not on the topic of EMF, but if you're really interested also more in, in, in understanding your own health, and looking after your own health. And I have a free program uh, called What If Secrets to Health, which is all about understanding the root cause or causes of uh, you know, these internal disturbances to health. And I also have a program called What Causes Illness, which is about all the multitude of factors which go to, towards con to contributing to illness, including environmental factors, uh, but also you know, internal factors, mind factors, emotional factors, physical toxin factors. It, it looks at everything from a helicopter view because we need to really be able to assess things from multiple factors if we want to understand you know, why am I sick and how do I get well. So I want to really thank you for joining me on this webinar. Uh, please do share it if you found it useful. Um, you know, it's all about informing people and educating people because once you see things in a different light and you understand what you didn't see before, it makes all the difference and you can make much better choices. So I'd really appreciate it if you would share this webinar.